Hello, Anime Visor here. And Signum. With a retro anime review, and I guess Blu ray review for Project Aiko, which originally came out in Japanese theaters in 1986. Seriously, Project Aiko? Is that some type of Jackie Chan reference? Actually, yes. The Project Aiko title is a reference to the Jackie Chan film Project A from 1983. Much like that film being an action comedy movie, Project Aiko is an action comedy anime movie, specifically one that uses a lot of parody and satire, something that can be hard to produce in Japan due to Japanese copyright laws. Contrary to my other retro anime reviews, I've seen Project Aiko before. The mid-2000s was probably when I first saw it, and not again until I picked up the Blu-ray that came out recently. I was still fairly new to anime at the time, but hadn't really seen anything like it, so it was always an anime that had just stuck with me, that I never forgot. I probably didn't appreciate it as much then as I do now, now being much more familiar with the tropes and series the movie parodies and spoofs. We'll go into that a little later, for now, what exactly is Project Aiko and what's it about? Let's find out. If we wanted to label Project Aiko, it's a parody slash satirical action comedy sci-fi anime movie. It is quite an animation project. Director Katsuhiko Nishijima, art director Shinji Kimura, character designer Yuji Moriyama. It's a proverbial laundry list of who's who that worked on Project Aiko. Despite being a comedy film, it has really good animation, and many of the animators and staff were up-and-comers at the time that got to prove their merit on this film and went on to have successful animation careers, still working on anime today. According to the Yuji Moriyama commentary track that's on the Blu-ray, there was a shift in anime being produced at the time. There were a lot of serious, no-nonsense anime coming out and Project Aiko was sort of a push against that trend. Something fun, crazy, but still had elements of lightheartedness. All that plus the animation, I assume helped appeal to a wider audience outside Japan. It was one of the early anime that got picked up for home video release in the US during the anime boom in the 90s, even airing on the Sci-Fi Channel back in 1997. Project Aiko. Next on the Sci-Fi Channel. The Sci-Fi Channel used to air anime? Yeah, there was a Saturday anime programming block in the 90s, hosted by live-action anime girl Apollo Smile. And later in the 2000s, there was an Annie Monday programming block on the Sci-Fi Channel. However, getting back on track, let's get into the Project Echo movie itself. 16 years have passed since a mysterious alien ship crashed on Earth. Graviton City, once leveled by the ship's crash, is now a bustling metropolis. Within the city's high school, superhuman high school student Eiko Magami dukes it out with the diabolical genius Biko Daitokuji, who will stop at nothing to win the love of Eiko's buddy Seiko Kotobuki. Meanwhile, in outer space, another alien ship is on course towards Earth to find its planet's lost princess. Forget the comedy, this sounds like a decent story on its own. Potentially, that's what makes Project Aiko work. While it does make callbacks and references to other anime, the story doesn't hinge on you understanding the references for the story to make sense. A lot of the ship designs are reminiscent of Gundam and or Macross. Mari has a very similar design to Kinshiro from Fist of the North Star but you don't need to know that to enjoy the story or the crazy antics of the characters. For instance, you don't need to know that the captain of the alien ship is a parody of Captain Harlock and Char to understand what's going on in the narrative. But if you do know who it's a parody of, you'll potentially find it funny when the usually cool and suave Captain Harlock slash Char like character doesn't have enough alcohol and starts to go crazy. Unrelated to any of the comedy, you might miss some plot relevant stuff. Moriyama mentions in the commentary that the connection between the crash ship at the beginning of the movie and the aliens coming looking for their princess isn't as super clear as it could be. 
that the princess specifically came from that ship is glossed over in the movie. This is a bit of a con the movie has. It also has a bit of fan service with panty shots and brief nudity. Not everyone's cup of tea. But there's an interesting pro that comes out of Project Aiko glossing over the princess and alien stuff. There's a point in the movie where there's seemingly no plot being progressed, where day after day, Biko starts some form of mech fight with Aiko. While the animation is superb in a lot of these scenes, it's easy to wonder at this moment what the point is of the story, because there's not a lot of plot progression going on. And out of that comes a bit of brilliance. That Aiko and Biko get so wrapped up fighting each other, they don't even notice the alien invasion. They destroy the school, they destroy the city, they're probably doing just as much if not more damage than the aliens. It's not until Seiko gets kidnapped by the aliens that the two start to worry about the aliens and the plot becomes Save Seiko. I kind of interpret that as Aiko and Biko get so wrapped up fighting that not even the story of the movie can progress unless Seiko is in trouble, potentially reinforced by the ending of the movie. Biko waiting for Aiko to come to school so she can challenge her again. A whole alien invasion just happened, half the city is destroyed, but they carry on like normal as if nothing happened. It's kind of funny. Intentional or not, it's another layer of comedy outside the parodies and the crazy facial expressions you see sometimes during the movie. That these two, Aiko and Biko, with the powers and abilities they have, would rather fight each other than stop an alien invasion, at least until Seiko gets wrapped up in it. It at the very least is not something a typical movie would do. The alien invasion would probably be a bigger focal point to the plot. At the very least, be more concerning to the characters. But because they aren't, it makes Project Aiko fun and unique outside having just really good animation. Good animation, fun, and unique story. What else could Project Aiko have? For one, a kicking soundtrack. Composed by Joey Carbone and Richie Zito, the soundtrack is really good. Unfortunately, I am not able to play any of the music. I want to avoid any copyright issues, but you can find the Project Echo soundtrack on YouTube. So go check it out if you're interested in the music. Dance Away is a nice 80s sounding pop song. In Your Eyes is a beautiful ballad. And Explosion is a really good instrumental metal rock track. All in all, if you're a fan of animation, music, or if you want to watch something fun and unique, check out Project Aiko. You can pick it up via Blu-ray, Project Aiko Perfect Edition, which has a ton of special features. Commentary by Yuji Moriyama, commentary by the Japanese voice actresses Miki Ito, Imi Shinohara, and Michie Tomazawa. This was an early and debut work for them as well, all of which went on to have decent careers in voice acting. Keen Sailor Moon fans may note that Shinohara and Tomizawa would work together again as Sailor Jupiter and Sailor Mars in the 90s version of Sailor Moon. Both commentary tracks feature English subtitles. The Blu-ray also has interviews, behind the scenes stuff, picture galleries of various model sheets, as well as a gallery on the process of even getting Project Echo on Blu-ray. In addition, there's even a short video about a CD-ROM game that never came out. It looks a bit creepy, so maybe it's a good thing it didn't. Yeah, it kinda does now that you mention it. Anyway, the Blu-ray is packed with special features. Heck, the Blu-ray case even has reversible art. This is great for me, as I like when the slipcover art and case art are different. It makes for a nice variety. It would, however, be nicer if I hadn't already somehow scuffed the slipcover. Looks like I tried to take a chisel to it for some reason. But at any rate, if you're a fan of Project Aiko, the Blu-ray is worth picking up. If you're new to Project Aiko and don't want to splurge on a movie you've never seen, it is available streaming on Retro Crush. They're not a sponsor or anything, they're just where you can find Project Aiko available for streaming. It's a streaming service that focuses a lot on older and retro anime, a lot of which are available for free, but there are select titles behind a paywall. However, Project Echo, as well as its sequels, 
are available streaming for free at the time of recording. Project Echo has sequels? Yes, there's even an alternative universe spin-off, but that one isn't on Retro Crush from what I can tell. None of them quite live up to the original, but they're not bad, especially if you like Project Echo and these ridiculous characters. To start wrapping things up, I'm glad that Project Echo finally got a Blu-ray release, and a pretty good one too, packed with special features with a lot of informative information. It was nice rewatching this movie again for the first time in a while. Now understanding a lot of the references than when I first watched it, it gave me a whole new appreciation for Project Echo other than having good animation and music. But that's kind of what makes Project Echo special. Even if you don't understand all the jokes, you can appreciate the animation or the music and enjoy those aspects just as much. With all that said, what are your thoughts on Project Echo? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date on when the next video comes out. Also consider checking out the Patreon, patreon.com slash AnimeVisor. As always, I've been AnimeVisor. And I've been Signum. Thanks for watching, and see you later. Bye bye.